protection buff too. So this is this is really neat. What is this? My name is Carol Harrig. I'm on the Fairfax County History Commission, and I'm currently vice president of the McLean Historical Society. This afternoon, we are at Salona, a historic home in McLean, Virginia. The house is built upon uh, land property that Thomas Lee patented in 1719. He patented a little over 3,000 acres. Um, Salona was built later on property that he patented. Uh, his son, um, Philip Ludwell Lee, was an owner of the property. His daughter, Matilda Lee, who was the uh, wife of uh, Light Horse Harry Lee, owned the property. And then later on, it went to uh, another uh, Lee, which was a cousin. Um, during the War of 1812, on August 24th, 1814, it's thought that James Madison spent the night here that the um, British burned the city of Washington. Uh, Dolly Madison spent the night a couple of miles down the road at a place called Rokeby. Uh, during the uh, Civil War, during the early stages of the Civil War, uh, 1861 uh, in October, October 10th to uh, March, mid-March of 1862, this property was occupied by Union troops and General William Farrar Smith, known as Baldy Smith, used the Salona House as his headquarters and the Vermont Brigade encamped on the property. Now the Vermont Brigade was the first brigade that consisted of um, single state or single um, regiments from a um, single state. And uh, General Smith wanted to be with his Vermont troops. So this house has survived over time and is very special to McLean. Salona is significant to McLean because of its history. Uh, from the very beginning of the um, beginning of Virginia, uh, this property was significant because it's near the uh, near the Potomac River. Uh, and then with the Lee family and uh, the Madisons and with Baldy Smith, the Smoot family owned this property for over a hundred years before the Duvalls purchased it. And it's a treasure because when Clive and Sue Duvall purchased the property, I think in 1952, they restored the house and have opened it up and have hosted events for the community. And to this day, there are major events that they host. Um, some are for the McLean Project for the Arts. They raise money, but it gives the chance for the public to be here on the grounds to get a feeling of the past. I mean, when you walk in here, it's like walking back in time. It's like when you go to Montpelier, you've walked back in time and yet you're right next door to downtown McLean. So you have the past with the present. I'm Karen Duval, my husband Dan, and we're in the living room at Salona in McLean. My parents bought this back in 1952, um, and they sort of pieced together some pieces. So at the end of the day, they actually had a little over 60 acres, and then some of it was taken uh, for the expansion of uh, Dolly Madison 123. So we currently, between the, the house and the almost eight acres around the house, which is in a historic conservation easement, and then um, an additional roughly 42 acres, or 45 acres, I guess, of which uh, 41 and a half are in a conservation easement, um, that's, the, that's the property. And on the property, of course, we have the, the house, the main house structure which we think was built around probably 1810, 1812. We don't really know. Um, you know, there are differing views on when that was. Uh, we do have a picture of it from the Civil War, and the kitchen wing is, it was not there during the Civil War, um, so it was clearly post-Civil War. Again, I'm not exactly sure when, but one mm -hmm. presumes kind of late 19th century. But we wing. know there were wings that did not, that existed here before, wooden wings. Um, probably on both sides, large wooden wings. And um, uh, there are some pictures that show at least one of those. And there are some artifacts outside that might suggest that some of the foundation that is part of the, the post-Civil War wing was actually a remnant of an earlier structure. And there is some thought that there might have been a dwelling here, whether it was this or something else, um, 
before the 1800s, possibly when the Lees owned the property and were doing some uh, early development in the area. But again, that's speculation. We don't really know. And, and interesting, you sort of um, kind of in sync with that is when they were doing some of the uh, archaeological studies in connection with our um, with our conservation easement, the, the uh, Fairfax County Park Authority, uh, some of the artifacts that they found outside one of the structures were more colonial era as opposed to Civil War and, and earlier. So that seems to support the notion that there was a dwelling here, um, you know, a good bit earlier than we think this main structure was built, but we don't exactly know what and, you know, exactly where it was. So. Um, but there is a uh, so there was an old building, which is where they found some of these out near what's now Buchanan Street. Uh, there is the um, foundation of a very large bank barn that we have pictures of from the turn of the 20th century. Uh, and there were all sorts of farm buildings around. Uh, whenever I dig a hole, I usually find a rock that's probably part of some old barn foundation. So. You know, it was you know it was clearly a working farm with a lot of barn buildings, many of which you know we don't have pictures of, and we don't exactly know where they were. Hopefully, someday we'll find them. There's an old spring house on the property that um, is still working. Uh, we have a, a what, uh, three seat privy. A three seat that's, privy, that's, yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So it's a very, it's a very uh, social there's a, event. <laughs> there's what, it was probably a smokehouse we use as a garden shed now, and a building that may have been an early farm office, uh, could have been an early kitchen, but the fireplace isn't very large in it. So there's a lot that we don't know about the property yet, but there are a lot of remnants of its earlier times when it was an agricultural concern. When my parents bought this in 1952, it had, it was extremely run down. I think um, it had been used really as a, at best, a boarding house and people sort of squatting here. So there were no mantles, walls were in terrible shape. They, they took several years, I think, to renovate the house at that time. Um, and so uh, I think the family moved in about uh, three weeks after I was born in 1953. Uh, and then they lived here, uh, both of them, until they passed away. Um, my mother in 1997 and my father in 2002. And Karen and I inherited the house at that point. Um, and we inherited a house that needed some work and some renovation at that point because they had not really done a lot to it in the last, you know, 20 years or so. And it had no air conditioning and it had, um, its, its bones were a little tired, shall we say. Well, it was the same thing when Dan's parents bought it. He, he, they bought the property from the Smoot family, which is a wonderful local family who'd owned the property for about 100 years. But toward the end of their ownership, they weren't living in the house, and uh, that's when, sometimes when it's at the end of a long run, things, that, there's some deferred <laughs> maintenance, and that has, has you know, happened in, um, in our family as well, as well. It's probably happening right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, but there is a, an old house is really uh, a labor of love, trying to keep things keep things going. And when we did our um, renovations, at at one point we thought we were going to do it through the uh, Department of Interior and uh, follow their um, their guidelines. We did try to do that. I think we were probably stricter than they were as far as what we wanted to do or what we uh, what our ambitions were. Our, ours was really to put it back so you couldn't tell so much that we had. Um, been in behind the walls, but that's when we did things like put in air conditioning and repair the plumbing so that when you flushed upstairs, it didn't come in downstairs. And that's sort of, sort of not very, you know, not very exciting thing, but things that you really are happy to have done once you get, once you get them finished. So we're sort of in a, a holding pattern, I guess, right yeah. now, trying to keep, trying to keep things in good repair so that the house is here for a long, long time to come. And it's, and it's, you know, it, because it's an old house, I mean, finding things like just somebody who is a mason who understands the old mortar, it really, you know, there are special skills in the plaster walls, and they're unfortunately harder and harder to find these days, but we have a few people, but they're even older than we are, so it's, <laughs> we're not sure <laughs> they're probably going to continue to be able to find them, but uh, yes, our... Our renovation project was estimated to take six months, and it took two years. So that'll give you mm -hmm. some idea of what it's like to work within, you know, a structure like this. But mm -hmm. uh, and that was ten years ago, and uh, you know, and we um, very happy with it. But there's always ongoing maintenance in a house like mm -hmm. this. 
part, part of it, I'm sure, stemmed from uh, my father being actively involved in politics, both of them being very community-oriented. Um, my mother um, in a variety of different causes, and my father, you know, among other things, political causes. Um, but you know, it got to be so that there were a number of events held there, and we, we continued that. I mean, Karen is um, former chair of the board of McLean Project for the Arts, and so we've done we did their 50th anniversary here. We've done a community, McLean Community Foundation fundraiser here, and we've done a smattering of political events here. And it is something, you know, we, we uh, hope we will continue that sort of commitment to, you know, having it be available as a resource, which is one of the reasons we did the conservation easement. We hope that the Salona Park will be a real community asset as well. So. Oh, I know, my, one of my favorite things here's the first time that I came well, to that's what I was thinking of. the first time that I came I to Salona <laughs> <laughs> when we were when we, we we met in law school and the first time I, I came here to the house we were driving in this you know nice long driveway and I saw this man running across the field holding about a six foot long black snake by the tail as he ran this thing over to the woods and Dan said huh there goes dad and there were a lot of black, there were black snakes that lived in, up close to the house in the patio and Dan's mom really wasn't too fond of them. So when he would see one, he would grab it by the tail and take it back out to the woods. And, and that was my first, uh, first uh, sighting of Senator Duval and I got a kick out of it. And, and interestingly enough, we, when we were doing the renovation, we walked in here in the middle of construction and in the cross hall along the back door, there was about a five foot black snake just stretched out and I turned to the foreman and I said, Mike, um, you do know there's a black snake back there, right? He said, yep, every day the air conditioning guys go under the house to start putting in duct work and the snake comes up and hangs out in the hallway until they leave and then he goes back downstairs. I inherited my mother's concern about snakes, and so I suggested that maybe we would have to remedy that before construction was done. <laughs> and would you note that's courtesy of the Vermont Historical Society? Awesome. I took down the. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, so that's the. Um, Should be facing the other way. But, it's all kind um, of eyeballed. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I mean, realize that you know it's not like you can get a satellite picture of it and he's walking from place to place. It's pretty cool. Yeah, when you look at some of the maps, you see the way they draw chain bridge road or whatever, and they're mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. quite right. But Captain Elisha Barney of the Sixth Vermont. Nice. Mm -hmm. Elijah Barney. And this would all of these would be uh, credited to the Vermont Historical right. Society. Right. Right.